Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we are going to be discussing how we can find the surface area and volume of a composite shape. So what does it mean when we say a composite shape? Well, really what that's talking about is a composite shape or composite solid is referencing more than one 3D solid put together. So in this case, we have an example here of a cube with a cylinder. We also have one with a pyramid and a cone. Now, sometimes those composite shapes are where we put them together and add them. Sometimes it's cutting out one of the shapes from the other one. So to find that overall volume, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that exact idea to figure out what we want. So how we're gonna find these is we're either going to add the two volumes or we're gonna subtract them, depending on the context of the problem. So let's take a look at this first one here. So do you see how we have this cylinder that was put on top of this prism or this cube? What that means is I'm actually, because they don't, they like sit on top of each other, but it's not cutting anything out, we're not missing something, we're gonna add the volume of these two shapes. So first we wanna start out by finding the volume of our cylinder the volume of the cylinder. And the way that we find the volume of a cylinder is we are gonna do pi times the radius times the height. So in this case, our radius, or this four here represents our diameter, which means that our radius is actually going to be two. So to find the volume of that cylinder, we're gonna do pi times two squared times our height, which is four. And so as we type that in, we get pi times two squared, which is four, times four, which is 16. So 16 pi, which is also known as 50.26 inches cubed. Okay, next we're gonna have to find the volume of that prism or that cube. I'm gonna call it a prism for this case. And to find the volume of that prism, it's the area of the base times the height. So the area of our base here is going to be five times five times our height, which is five, and five times five times five, or five cubed, is 125 inches cubed. So then to find the volume of this overall shape, what we're gonna do is add those two things, and as we add them, we get 175.26 inches cubed. Okay, not too bad, right? So now let's take a look at this other one. Now in this case, you can see that we have a pyramid, but inside the pyramid, we've actually cut out a, con a cone shape. So because we've cut out that cone, what we're gonna do in this one is we're actually going to subtract the two volumes rather than add them because one of those volumes is being removed from the inside of the other. So let's start by finding the volume of our pyramid. So to find the volume of a pyramid, what we're going to do is we have one third times the area of our base times the height of our pyramid. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got one third, the area of our base is nine times nine. So 81 times our height, which is eight. And as we do that, one third times 81 times eight, we end up getting 216 meters cubed. Awesome. Now what we wanna do is find the volume of that cone and to find the volume of a cone, what we're gonna do is it's actually one third of the volume of the cylinder. So one third pi times our radius squared times our height. Well, in this case, that six represents the whole distance across our circle. So our radius is actually going to be three meters. And so we've got one third pi times three squared times eight. Now we can simplify that part on the outside. And what we're really looking at here is one third times nine times eight times pi, which is 24 pi. And that ends up getting us 75.39 meters cubed. Okay, so then once we have those, because we're taking the volume of the cone out of the volume of the pyramid, I'm gonna subtract them. So for our overall volume, we're gonna do 216 which is the volume of the pyramid, minus the volume of the cone, which is that 75.39, and 216 minus 75.39 is going to be 140.61 meters cubed. Okay, so that would be the overall volume for this shape. So you can see when we find that volume of composite shapes, what we're doing is we find the volume of both, and then we either add those two volumes if they're stacked on top of each other, or subtract the volume if it's stuck inside. Now, those are super important and really helpful. If we wanted more practice, here are some great examples. So what I want you to do is take a second, pause the video, figure out what the volume of these composite shapes are. After you've finished, go ahead and unpause the video and I will double check and show you what we've got there.
Okay, hopefully you've worked through these problems. I'm gonna work through them very quickly as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first one here. So as we're looking at that composite volume of this shape, what we wanna do is we actually wanna look at the volume of the top plus the volume of the bottom. So the volume of our pyramid here is going to be, remember to find the volume of the pyramid, it's one third the area of the base times the height. And so we're gonna do one third. The area of our base here is actually a three by 10. So 30 times the height of that, which is four. And so one third times 30 times four is going to be 40 feet cubed. Awesome, then we need to find the volume of that prism. And so the volume of our prism, remember, is the area of the base times the height. So in this case, that's going to be 40 is our area of our base. Oh, just kidding. Guess what I just noticed? Up here we said the area of the base was 30, but notice how this base is the same as this base. So it's not actually 30. Our height here is the part that's three, but this distance is actually four and this one's 10. So this number actually here is not the correct one. So our area of our base of our pyramid is actually going to be 40 units. So then we need to find one third times 40 times four, which is going to be 53.33 feet. And then we need to find the volume of our prism. And so the volume of our prism is going to be the area of the base, which is 40 times the height, which is three. And so that will end up giving us 120 feet. And so once we have that area of the base and the area of the pyramid or the volume of the base, the volume of the prism, the volume of the pyramid, our overall volume here is going to end up being 170 3.33 feet cubed. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at this one here. This one we, I'm just gonna walk you through. What we're gonna end up doing is finding the area of this side of our sphere. Now notice if this distance is six, this distance is also six. Same thing here, this'll be six, this'll be six, so that radius there is six. And then the volume of our cylinder. So actually for this one, we can just add those composite shapes of a cylinder plus a sphere. And when we add that cylinder plus that sphere, what we end up getting for ourselves is we're going to end up getting 2,488.14 meters cubed. If you have questions about how we got that, please ask, but that's how we would do that. Now, the very last thing we're going to cover here is how we can find surface area of composite shapes. Now, to find the surface area of a composite shape, we're just going to go over these two. But what we have to do is add the surface areas together, but keep in mind the parts that overlap. So, for example, in this one, our surface area involves the outside of our, of our cylinder. It involves the top, but it does not include the bottom right, because the bottom isn't exposed. Similar to our cube, we have all five faces. So one, two, this one in the back, three, four, and this bottom one is five. But this top one, we have six minus this area here that the cylinder is sitting on top of. So to find that surface area, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna have to find all those sides. So we have five sides for our cube that all have the same surface area, which is 25. Plus we've got the area of our cylinder here, which is going to be for our top circle, we've got pi r squared, plus the cylinder part, which is two pi r times the height. And then we actually have to do that area of the top. So 25 minus pi times our radius squared. Now let's fill in this radius squared part here that we've got, and so we are going to erase our little r here, and this r here, and our h, and our other r, and we need to ask ourselves, what is the radius in this case? Well, the whole distance up there is four, so this is two squared. We've got pi times two times our height, which is four, times our radius, which is two. So then here, as we multiply this out, we end up getting 125 plus pi r squared, or pi times four, which is going to be 12.56 plus two times two times four times pi for that cylinder, which is 50.26, plus this last part here, which is 25 minus that four pi. 
and that gives us a 12.56 as well. And so then once we have that, or 12.43, excuse me, then we can just add up all of these different areas that we found, and we have 125 plus 12.56 plus 50.26 plus 12.43. And what we end up getting is a surface area of 200.25 or 26, depending on how you round. Okay, so that's how we can find that surface area. Now, a big tip is if sometimes we're gonna be given something that doesn't have enough information for our surface area. So in that case, what we wanna do is we don't wanna find that surface area. If you were interested in finding it, we could actually use our Pythagorean theorem because notice how this creates a right triangle right here, this part of the cone. Now remember to find the surface area of a cone, what we have to do to find this outside piece is we actually have to do this length here. So to find that length, what we're gonna do is we know this is three, so we need the square root of three squared plus eight squared. And that'll give us that distance L right here. And so as we calculate that, we've got 3 squared plus 8 squared, and then we're going to take the square root of it. I ended up getting that L was 8.54, or that this distance here is 8.54. So using that, we can actually figure out the surface area of this. So to find the surface area of our pyramid here, what we're going to have to do is we are going to have to use this to find the surface area of our cone, and then we actually have to find this distance as well, which we can do using the Pythagorean theorem to find the height of those triangles. Now, I'm not gonna make you do it on this problem because that's kind of a lot of work, and it involves a lot of calculations, but we can always use the Pythagorean theorem to find those heights if we need it. So let's take a look at one last example of how we can find the surface area of a composite shape, and the one we're gonna look at is actually this one. So this one has that side that we need to find. So to find that side, remember, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, and we're going to do 3 squared plus 4 squared. And this actually creates a special right triangle, which is called a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So I know that this side's going to turn out to be 5, which is pretty great. So now that we know that this side is 5 inches, we can then find the whole surface area of this shape. Now be aware that we've got one circle on the bottom, and our cone only has that outside part. So as we're adding up for this surface area, what we've got is we've got the area of the circle on bottom, which is pi r squared, plus the outside of our cylinder, which is 2 pi r times our height, plus the outside of our cone, which is pi times the radius times that distance there. So let's go ahead and substitute those in. We've got pi. Our radius here in this case is actually 3, and that's going to be the same radius that we have down here. So pi times 3 squared plus 2 times 3 times our height of our cylinder, which is 7, plus pi r times l, so pi times our radius is 3, times our l, which is 5. And so then we can go ahead and multiply these ones out here. And what we're going to end up getting is pi times 9, plus 2 pi times 3 times 7, plus pi times 3 times 5, which is 15. And what we ended up getting is 207.34 inches squared. So using that Pythagorean theorem, we can find some of those other distances, and then we can actually find more information in order to calculate that surface area. So it's a super cool thing that we can do to calculate that surface area, but that's how we would do it of a composite shape. We need to be aware of what parts of the surface area are already covered and that we don't see anymore. So they're no longer on the surface per se. But that is how you find the surface area and volume of composite shapes. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out.